Greetings, JC here with a screencast. Today we're going to talk about PC sound cards. We'll talk about integrated audio, and we'll talk about getting the best quality from the audio hardware on your PC. I'll also give you a quick look at how to set up the audio hardware on your Windows 7 PC, which is a bit different from earlier versions of Windows. Most computers these days come with what's called integrated audio, where the audio hardware is built directly onto the motherboard. It used to be that integrated audio automatically meant low quality audio, but today the integrated audio that comes in most PCs rivals the quality of many higher end PCI sound cards. The trick is knowing how to set it up to get the best from it. Nearly all consumer grade sound cards, either integrated or PCI slot sound cards for a PC, use 1 8 inch stereo phone jacks to connect microphones, line inputs, and speaker outputs. Now you can have more than the three that are illustrated here. You can have sound cards now that do 7.1 surround sound. So therefore, when you look at the back of your PC, you may see some extra jacks on the back. Some sound cards are not necessarily hardwired to exactly what the jack is labeled as. In other words, if you plug something in, the sound card automatically detects that you've plugged a jack in, and it will allow you to assign that jack to either an input, an output, or a microphone. Most consumer audio devices use RCA jacks for the input and the output, and they break them out into right and left. Also, lots of small professional mixers use this for an output. So if you're going to be using a mixer to get your microphones and audio inputs into the computer, you're going to have to invest in a cable that has a 1 8 inch stereo plug on one end and two RCA jacks on the other. Another way to get RCA analog audio into the 1 8 inch phone jack on your sound card is to use one of these nifty little adapters. As long as you have the physical clearance for the extra wide plug, this can be a very nice way of making connections. We're looking at the Windows 7 control panel and this is where we can set up the uh, audio inputs and outputs and levels on our sound equipment. If you are upgrading to Windows 7 from XP or Vista, I strongly urge you to make sure that before you go setting this stuff up, that you make sure that you have the very latest drivers for whatever audio card you have, whether it be an integrated card or a PCI slot card. The Windows 7 operating system will see most cards that are out there inside computers and will give you very basic audio functions without the drivers. However, to get all of the functionality of your particular card, it's best to go on and get the very latest version of the software and drivers that are intended to work with it. So to uh, get in and start looking about looking in at setting up sound, we go in here and set uh, we'll go for sound, and we'll get this. And the first thing that shows up is our output device. In this case, it is set up for speakers. You can click in here, and then uh, you can click on levels, and uh, you will get a uh, what kind of looks like the old Windows mixer that's going to allow you to set your levels. In this case, we're monitoring the microphone input, and uh, then that's the actual main uh, output of the computer. Of course, with uh, this card, you can also send it to different digital devices. You can take the sound out of the computer and send a digital signal where it's not converting the digital to analog and sending the actual digital out. So if you have devices that support that, you might want to look into that. Now here's where it gets just a bit tricky with Windows 7, and that's setting up the record channel. Most of the time when you first install the operating system, even if you have the local drivers uh, for your sound card available, you're not going to see a stereo mix or what you hear. So uh, you are going to have to go in and set that up for yourself. Uh, and it's just not going to be here. You're just going to see microphone front, microphone back, line in, things like that. And, and that's pretty much the standard setup, and the reason why is because I'm, I'm assuming that they are, do not want to, to record streaming audio. But for some applications, it's absolutely necessary to have uh, the ability to record the stereo mix, like mixing a line in or microphone input with audio that's playing back on your computer for streaming audio. So to get that, what you need to do 
is click down here where there isn't anything and make sure that you are seeing disabled devices and that will usually pop up if you check that it will pop up and then you can go and set up what you hear or stereo mix different manufacturers call that different things as a matter of fact that is what we're using to record this video is the stereo mix and the actual analog audio going into the computer is going in through the microphone input even though I'm using a mixer to uh, amplify the microphone that I'm using and of course that allows me to put other analog sound into the machine from tape recorders and turntables and things like that. I'm not using the line in and mainly because the line input on this particular sound card is digitized a little differently and it creates a delay when you monitor it. So if you have a microphone and uh, you, you get this slap delay and it's uh, very annoying through the speakers or the headphones. One of the nifty things about the Windows 7 Audio Manager is the fact that it has meters sitting right there that let you see your input levels. And to set those levels, all you do is double click on your device and uh, you can go to levels and uh, you can set up the input uh, for uh, the proper amount of audio going into it. You can also look at a sound recorder such as Adobe or anything that has a meter on it and have that running and get a little bit more of an accurate representation. But these meters will at least let you know that the system is working properly. If you find yourself a little confused about exactly what was going on when we were configuring the audio in the control panel in Windows 7, this might help to make things just a bit more clear. We're looking at the configuration dialog for a couple of pieces of audio recording software. And as you can see in MP3 Direct Cut here, we can set up our input and output. Our output is going to the speakers in our Realtek High Definition Audio Card, and our input we're taking from the stereo mix, which we configured earlier. Exactly the same thing is happening over here in the uh, configuration wizard for Adobe Adobe Audition 3. In Adobe Audition 3, uh, we set the same sort of settings. This is a little bit more complicated being a professional piece of software. When we look at our input channel, our default input, we get a few more choices because it actually talks to the sound card on a deeper level and it allows you to choose either the right channel or the left channel or the stereo channels or even a mono mix so you have more choices. If you're configuring uh, Adobe Audition 3 in Windows 7, you're going to have to kind of experiment to find out exactly which input is going to work for you um, as far as uh, getting an actual stereo left and right input. Now, the reason why this is a little bit more complicated is because you can also set this up to uh, do some very nifty things in a multi-track mode if you have a sound card that has more than the standard stereo right and left inputs. Many sound cards have virtual inputs uh, that allow you to set up a multi-track, but that is an entirely different video. So anyhow, I hope this video helps you to understand a little bit more about your sound card and what it's capable of doing. And I hope this also helps you if you plan to be upgrading to Windows 7 in the future, as Windows 7 handles the audio slightly different than older versions of Windows. For Interface, I'm Jay Singer.